According to numerology, the year 2022 includes three vibrations of number two in magnifying their energies, as well as influences from number zero in magnifying all their influences. Number two vibrates duality, balance, and adaptability, faith, trust, cooperation, and diplomacy. The number also represents love, family, and partnerships. Manifesting miracles, achieving balance, and new opportunities are highlighted by the number 2022. Focusing on the bigger picture and paying attention to the details will help you turn your most ambitious dreams into reality in 2022. So if any of this resonates for you, I ask you to stay and tune in to this episode. Welcome back, Soul Tribe, and happy 2022. I am super excited. It's Steph here, Steph Desar from the Divine Feminines podcast. And if you haven't joined our podcast before and it's your first time, then welcome to the new listeners, the new Soul Tribe joinees. And you know what? It's series five. We hit four series last year. And I'm super grateful, so much gratitude for all of what we've achieved. And now we're getting into 2022 and there's so much more to come. And do you know what? I I can't even comprehend the words I want to say right now. So I'm just going to stop there and just say thank you to everybody. And today's episode is about the vibration of 2022. It just felt right. It's the first week of January. And oh, those numbers, those twos have got me, got my eyes gleaning. So I had to have a really special guest. And I'm super excited to invite the Jonathan Lewis Dent. He's an astro numerologist, a Reiki master, a writer, an artist, a meditation teacher, and a life coach. Grab all of that. He uses astrology and numerology to help people better understand themselves so that they can tap into more deeply into their life purpose. And he uses Reiki as an energetic container for people to be able to align with their most elevated versions of themselves. He received a master's in acting from NYE Tisch in 2015, and his love for the stage and performances taught him how to listen to people's life story with empathy, discernment, and compassion. He can be found on social media under Jonathan L. Dent, and we will share that information after this episode is up. And you can catch him on his personal website, www.jonathanldent.com. With that being said, Welcome, Jonathan, to the Divine Feminines podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and to have this conversation. Can I just say, I love that accent. It's a New Yorker accent, right? (laughs) It is. It is. I am in New York. Um, I was originally from New Jersey, but New York is where I have planted my flag. It's where I do my work. And I'm happy that you like the accent. Yeah, it's authentic. Ah, so we've got the NJMY twang. So what up, New Jersey? What up, New York? I hope you guys are here today with us. (laughs) (laughs) We've got actually listeners from all around the world in our Spotify wrap up. It said that we hit 41 countries last year. So that was a great, yeah. Great win. And I'm thinking, well, um, I hope they could comprehend what we were saying because we were speaking in English for most of that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So happy new year to you. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling wonderful. Happy new year to you. Happy new year to your audience. Um, I'm feeling really tapped in, grateful for this new year. Um, yesterday, we had our first new moon of 2022 in Capricorn and I set my intentions and I did a lot of work um, at my spiritual altar. I went to the river because it's part of my spiritual practice to go to bodies of water and to commune with the spirits there. Um, So I'm feeling rejuvenated. I'm feeling really purposeful. Um, I'm feeling grateful to be able to do the work that I do, which is hold space for people's light. Um, and really grateful to have this conversation and to see what comes up in the divine timing of it all. Wow. Um, just when you mentioned the river, I got mm. chills. Like, I love being around water and yeah. that whole sort of tribute, like ritual that you have, beautiful. Mm. It just touched my soul. Mm. And mm. I just have to say, like, Thank you to the universe for the alignment because I I was following your page and I love the content that you put up. 
So when you were willing to be here today, it just it, it, it just like the universe gave me the call and said, it's Jonathan. And then I called you, <laughs> Jonathan, and you said, yeah, it's me. And I'm like, yeah, it's us. We're going to do this. So mm-hmm. and before we so we're going to talk about the vibration of 2022. And I want to know about your thoughts and feelings about the year before we get into that. But before we get into that, I just want the soul tribe to become more familiar with who you are. And so this astro numerologist said that, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And can you kind of give us a bit more context and how did you get into this so we can get to know you better? Sure. So astro numerology is just a fancy way of saying that I use astrology and numerology, which are two different systems, but they often complement each other extremely well. So I use both of them when working with clients to see purpose, to see talents, to also see karma that you might have brought in on this life. And all of this as a means of revealing to you who you are so that, A, you can learn better how to nurture and love yourself, how you can lean into your talents, so to speak, how you can be a little bit more thoughtful and sensitive to your tender parts, because that's often a lot of the work that I do is in holding space for people's wounds and difficult times in their life. And all of these things are towards the aim of helping people tap into a sense of purpose, but also to feel like your life has meaning to it, right? I think I like to talk to a lot of people who just need to be affirmed in their experience, that like to feel seen in their experience, but beyond just seeing people and affirming people, I like using astrology and numerology because they are really practical um, modalities to help people figure out how to increase their life power, so to speak. You can use you can use numbers, you can use the vibration of your planets to really understand how to make your life better in practical ways, right? It's one thing to be told you might have had a difficult experience at five years old, or it's one thing to be told you might have a difficult experience with your mother and you're still working with that energy, but it's a whole nother conversation to not only see what your energetic pattern might be, but also how to implement a certain Um, behavioral system so that you can honor yourself and learn how to best work through what your experience has been, because that's ultimately what I think um, is powerful about astro numerology. It's affirming you, it's seeing you, but also putting you in positions of power so that you can excel and live up to your greatest potential. Wow. Well, if that hasn't got your brain's interested soul tribe or your hearts or your souls curious I don't know what will (laughs) so thank you Jonathan that's a really good um background to to what you do and why you do it and um I I totally get with the feeling of you know we need to work with the energy we 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 have the opportunity to own our energy and then understand the energies around us so how we navigate best and show up mm. best in the world so mm. um astrology and numerology has definitely played um more of a significant role in my life in more recent years um it's definitely something that i didn't realize would have that much um value to me but i see it with um with so much value and i'm using it with uh, my own personal kind of navigation with my coach and it helps so much like you know looking at your solar return for the year ahead um yes. and and in this type of kind of perspective so it helps me to be you know to try to be the best I can be but anyway mm-hmm. enough about me the vibration of the year 2022 I mean before we go into the numerology of it What are your thoughts and feelings for this year? You know, how are you setting yourself up for the year ahead? I just wanted to be a bit nosy. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, for me, it's I am going into a 12th house perfected year. That's a fancy way of saying that in astrology, every time that you celebrate a new birthday, you activate a different part of your astrological chart. All of our charts are comprised of 12 houses that all correspond to different aspects of our reality, right? So the first house relates to your physical body and your self-conception. The fourth house relates to your home environment and your ancestors and your roots. The 12th house, which is the house that has just been activated by my 35th birthday, is the house of 
isolation, seclusion. It's also the house of sacred endings and meditation and healing. So mm -hmm. I'm using this year as an opportunity to really fortify my meditation practice. I'm using it as an opportunity to really fortify my spiritual practice, making space for alone time, for sacred um, solitude, as I like to call it. This will be a year for me that is spent in my cave, so to speak. And that means waking up a little bit earlier in the morning so that I can do my meditations at my altar. It's doing, it's taking the spiritual baths. It's taking the walks in nature. This is a really revitalizing time for me to dip more deeply into my spiritual practices so that when I show up for clients, I, I am infused with that work and discipline that I've been doing in my cave. Wow. Well, I don't think it's a man cave. It's more of a spiritual cave, which I like more of the sound of. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. If you were talking to a Vedic Indian astrologer, they would call the 12th house the house of moksha. And moksha basically translates to the house of enlightenment. When I talk about the cave, I'm talking about the cave that a yogi might be sitting in in the Himalayan mountains to dissolve into the universal consciousness that we all are. So I mean that cave of internal um, knowingness, that internal space of mm -hmm. infinite stillness and quiet, because from that stillness and from that quiet, that's where you can touch the sacred, in my opinion. Absolutely agree. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely been something that's allowed me to really connect with myself. And I am a being mm -hmm. that needs I definitely need that time, you know, and I can relate to you. I'm actually trying to create more space um, in the earlier part of the day to be able mm -hmm. to have my spiritual practices before I get into the fast paced corporate life that I have, because that's my duality of like, you know, who I really am at the core soul level. I'm not recording my podcasts all day long and that's fine. But um, so I'm doing other kinds of, you know, business work. And so I need that balance. And so I'm with you on this. I don't, I'm not sitting in the 12th house in my year ahead, but I still believe that we all need to have time for our own inward work, self journey and enlightenment. So I'm going to take some of the activities that you're doing and adopt and make sure I'm doing those too, or continue to do those. <laughs> so thanks for the inspiration. So when we go into the numbers 2022, I mean, I, I always was seeing the number 222 for years, like the last three mm. or four years. I'd see 111, 222, and two, twos bring balance, right? But I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. the expert. So tell me more, Jonathan, like what can we expect with these numbers? What does it mean? Right. So whenever you're doing dealing with a new year, when numerologists talk about the universal energy of the year is X, right? The reason why 2021 last year was a year five is because you always add up every digit in the year that you're in. So last year, two plus two plus one equals five. The five is the energy of change. It's the energy of being at the crossroads. It's a time of uncertainty. It's a time where the elements are shifting, when water is becoming air and water is then also freezing and becoming solid. So it's that transitional space. This year being 2022, you add all of those twos up, you land on the six. And the six is the vibration of healing. It's the vibration of healing that specifically has to do with one's relationships. And it, even deeper, it has to do with one's relationships to family. And when I say family, it means both biological family and one's chosen family. But the six beyond dealing with healing and relationships and family, it's a number of responsibility. And the responsibility that the six carries is in prioritizing your healing practice. And often when I talk to people and break down their numerology, if I'm talking to a life path six, for instance, and I'm speaking um, a little biased here because I also am a life path six, one of the trends <laughs> that I have noted, one of the trends that I've noticed with this energy pattern is you can fall into the trap of prioritizing other people's healing journeys before your own. 
So this is interesting within the context of the six being about responsibility, because this responsibility that the six carries with it is really a responsibility to one's own self, right? I often use the metaphor with six energy that sixes love to make sure that everybody else's glass is full first, and then they tend to go and fill their glass um, first at the end when they're depleted, when they are exhausted from doing all of the other maintenance. But mm -hmm. the six energy is really encouraging us to make sure that we tend to our glass first and foremost. It's can you be brave enough? Can you be um, self-nurturing enough to fill your glass up first and just recognize that when you are working at full capacity, when your cup is running over, that's going to enable you to show up in a fuller, deeper, richer capacity for the people that you want to heal. So this responsibility that the six carries with it is really a responsibility to one's own self to heal your relationship with your own self, because you are your chosen family as well. You are your own biological family. You are your most important relationship in your life. The way that you treat yourself, the way that you think about yourself will often dictate every other aspect of your life. So the six that we have now stepped into is really giving us an opportunity to redefine how we relate to ourselves, how we are showing up for ourselves. If there is any shame that you feel about making sure that your glass is full first, this is a year to release that shame. If you have guilt about needing to make sure your glass is full, you need to release that guilt. These are all of the nudges from the universe that we are being encouraged to incorporate into our practice of healing within this year wow okay so there's a lot here and actually I, I loved hearing all of that because I'm a massive you know advocate for healing because I feel that mm. in anything and I'm always saying this on podcast episodes and, and to those that I interact with and on our on our social media page like in anything that we want to do or become it's, you know, if we feel like we have blockages or we're not able to get to where we want to go, we have to go inward. We have to care for ourselves. We have to understand what it is that needs to be, you know, looked at, whether you call that shadow work, mirror work, mm. going in the shadows and really understanding those wounds and starting to heal those and, and, and really taking triggers to a level of like development, right? So I understand mm -hmm. I'm being triggered. So what is it that I need to develop within myself or, or release or let go or, you know, or change in terms of behavioral thinking mm -hmm. patterns? So um, I, I love that. And I think that from a personal perspective of what we've seen being, you know, that's been happening in recent years, it's, it's no better time than now to really start to hone in on the healing to, you know, a really um larger extent with more intensity you know you mentioned like the whole family and um you know family chosen family and the relationships you know the number six and I don't know if you're into tarot Jonathan but the number six mm -hmm. is also representative of the lover's card in tarot mm -hmm. and um also representative of divine love and I feel that that connects very well to what you're saying because how can you really have this divine love with others, whether it's a family member, your soul tribe, a partner, romantic, um, you know, your child, whatever it is, if you don't have the divine love flowing from within you at full capacity? Exactly. Exactly. So and what, what's interesting also, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, the six is the energy of Venus as well. So that ties Ooh. in very strongly to what you're saying in terms of the tarot and the lover's card. This is why, again, astro numerology works very well together because often the energy that the year is suggesting we step into will be reflected in the energy of the, of the planets. So the fact that we have entered into a six year and the six is the embodiment of Venus, it's very significant that Venus right now is in retrograde and it's in retrograde until January. January 29th, when you spoke earlier about the need to go within, whenever planets go retrograde, that's always a signal from the universe to take that planetary energy and to allow it to be internalized in some way. So what does a Venus retrograde represent? It represents us really kind of checking in with the way that our hearts feel. It's checking in about the relationships in our lives. It's checking in about again, who deserves to be 
in that family of yours, whether it's biological or chosen, because the six energy is also about boundary setting. That's incredibly important to bring into the conversation when we talk about the six and the healing that is encouraged with the six. Often, this is the healing that is done by either erecting stricter boundaries with people in your life or knocking those boundaries down and being intentional about creating more intimacy. So boundaries are really important to talk about when we're talking about the sixth energy. And it's when we're talking about Venus being in retrograde until January 29th, we still have a few more weeks for us to really kind of dive within and do some internal investigating about okay, how are my boundaries? Do I need to establish deeper boundaries with my family? Or is it now time to let them in? Is it time for me to allow my chosen family, my friends and whatnot, my colleagues who might feel like family members as well, do I need to establish more boundaries there or do I need to let them in more? All of these types of questions are being encouraged in this retrograde period that we're in right now with Venus. And because Venus represents the six, all of it relates to healing. And this healing is about an internal investigation. Yeah, this is so interesting. So, uh, you know, with the boundaries, definitely something that we're going to have later on in 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 this series around owning your energy so guys stay tuned for that it is about boundaries and we'll get on to that in a few weeks time but I like what you said about do I need to set boundaries or do I need to kind of maybe relax them a little bit to let family in I can resonate with that because it I literally last night had a dream about my brother without going into detail, but I felt in the dream and I do have quite prophetic dreams and I astral travel a lot, but it was Mm. like I was traveling with him and he was going through something and, you know, and he doesn't, he's the eldest, so he doesn't tell us much. Um, And I definitely felt something was going on. So I messaged him today, read the message. He didn't reply, but he read it. And I just knew straight away, my heart and soul, something's happening And maybe he's reflecting over something or having to heal something. And, you know, he doesn't have to tell me, but it's interesting because I set a boundary with him, Jonathan, that was pretty high. And I had to at the time because I had no boundaries at all at the time, several years back. So I had to kind of go a bit bold because I needed to sort of self-protect, start working on myself. And as I sort of evolve now, I'm able to kind of release, you know, relax those boundaries that in a way that is suitable to the way that I want my life to be and the energy Mm. that I want around me, right? Still protecting my energy. Um, So it's it's interesting that that's happened and I've had that dream and, you know, and so I like that with boundaries, what you're saying is it's not about setting them to sort of, but you can also review them and say, actually, I want to change this boundary with the relationships with x y person Mm, absolutely because we have to talk about the fact that not only is venus retrograde but it's retrograde in the sign of capricorn and capricorn excels in being very structured and disciplined and organized. So when Venus goes retrograde in a sign like Capricorn, we're being encouraged to really kind of go through our life almost as if it were an organized planner. And like, you, it would be a good idea to literally write down the most important relationships in your life on a piece of paper and literally look at that name that you've written down and see how you feel. And then as you are experiencing that feeling, as you are sitting with that person's energy, You need to be evaluating that relationship and thinking about what needs to change, if anything. And also, it's worth saying that you don't have to make any drastic changes. Not every relationship in your life with your family member or your friends needs to have some dramatic shift. But there is an opportunity for review at the very least. And again, with Venus being in Capricorn and Capricorn being the sign that loves to have a long-term plan, that likes a sense of structure and order, if you can bring a sense of order and structure to this internal investigating, it'll be a really Power, profound experience for you. And I have to also just interject quickly after, after you shared about the dream that that is very <laughs> Jupiter and Pisces energy, right? Ooh, so, really? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, tell me more. <laughs> so, Pisces is the natural ruler of the 12th house. It's psychic, sensitive, intuitive waters. The 12th house not only represents um, the subconscious and unconscious, so the subconscious and unconscious being 
expressed and uh, manifested in our dreams, when Jupiter goes into a sign like Pisces, no matter where it might fall in our chart, it's a very spiritually charged time for all of us, especially in the astral realm, especially in our subconscious. It's almost like what you have been ignoring, either on a subconscious or unconscious level, is going to rise to the surface. So this is something that, and Jupiter has gone into Pisces quite recently within this last week. And in the sessions that I've been having with people over the last week, you would be shocked to hear how many people have been talking about the significant changes that they have felt in their dreams. A lot of people are receiving visitations from family members. A lot of people are having these intense experiences with people that they love in their life. So I just had to, I wouldn't be the astrology nerd if I I, I am, if I didn't mention that being very well, much so in that dream. Well, the night before, there was someone else from the past that was in the dream, someone I care deeply about. So uh, they looked very different, but they were in the dream. So this makes a lot of sense. So thank you for that, Jonathan. So I was actually going to mention what does Jupiter in Pisces mean? But just mm. one more thing on the Venus um, uh, retrograding Capricorn. The mm -hmm. one thing I think also that you sort of have been saying is, it's time for review, but we don't necessarily need to make any decisions, right? It's an evaluation mm -hmm. time. Don't take any action as such, but just evaluate yes. and sort of gain some insight, almost like you're studying how things are right now for you and maybe considering mm -hmm. maybe what might need to be tweaked or adapted or adjusted, if anything. Yes, it's a time for observation. It's a time for reflection and record keeping. That's why I always encourage my clients to um, write these things out or to structure it in some type of way that doesn't just require you to do this reflection internally, but if you can somehow write or express or manifest this reflection outwardly in some way, whether it's through doing morning pages, which is just the practice of waking up and doing a free write for about five minutes where you're just getting your thoughts out on a piece of paper. I think it can be really helpful during this energy of reflection about the significant relationships in our life to spend some time writing about those relationships and seeing what comes. Allow yourself to be surprised by what might you might discover in giving yourself permission to tap into the subconscious and unconscious mind. And the best way to do that often I find is by doing writing exercises where you write without judgment um, can be a really powerful way to see what your own energy and soul is trying to reveal to you. Mm, okay, that's really great advice. Thank you, Jonathan. So um, just back onto the Jupiter in Pisces, is there anything else to share on on this energy? Like, what's the time? When does this end, this period? Um, Jupiter will exit out of Pisces in late April. So we're in this energy for the first few months of 2022. Jupiter is one of the co-rulers of Pisces. That just means that when Jupiter, who is the planet of abundance and prosperity and buoyancy and wealth, and when I talk about wealth, it's both external wealth, but also internal wealth, which is wisdom and compassion and gentleness, things like that. When Jupiter is in a sign like Pisces, which it co-rules, it is its most expansive self, mm -hmm. is its wisest version of itself. So it's a really spiritually charged time. It's a time to really um, continue to commit to your spiritual practices because you will receive significant downloads. However, downloads occur for you in your life, whether they be through intuitive feelings, whether they're through synchronicitous messages or meetings that you have with people. Um, but what I've been advising people and talking to people a lot about is the, the trap of Jupiter and Pisces is to take this energy for granted. By that, I mean, because it is a very prosperous time, because it's going to feel very expansive, there could be a tendency that we all have to take our foot off of the pedal, so to speak. By that, I mean, this is not the time to 
start slacking on your spiritual practices. This is not the time to start becoming overindulgent because the dark side of Jupiter being in Pisces is you can kind of take things to the extreme. You can become, you can almost expand too much in direction. So in order for you to truly be able to tap into the gems possible here, you want to make sure that you're still still committing to your work, whatever your work might be. You don't want to become lazy. You don't want to become seduced by all of the um, people that are sharing about this on social media being a time of great manifestation and abundance and wealth. It's not that those things aren't true, but they will most be maximized and you're, you're going to get the most fruit out of this um, particular transit by continuing to do your work. So that's all I would caution people against is not to become soft in um, maintaining your spiritual discipline and maintaining your spiritual hygiene and routine, if that makes sense. Absolutely does. And I'm so glad you gave that message, Jonathan. I mean, when we were conversating before, I was saying, you know, my concern is, is that it's great to see those messages like, you know, we're in a period of, um, you know, a magical manifestation. It's the beginning of the year. It's 2022, triple two. You know, there's some great vibrations with the repeating numbers. Um, you know, everything that you've mentioned around um, the energy that's coming through with Jupiter. But it's it's expansive. But we mm. cannot take, you know, take it for granted. We have to continue to align ourselves in the best way and my concern is always that you know before a spiritual awakening we can easily be caught in our ego so I'm just saying Mm. this I'm saying this because our soul tribe are from all different you know all different life paths and journeys and so wherever you are right now remember that yes our ego is always going to be with us but it's when we are an observer of our ego and we can work with it in the best way possible is that we can be our best self. And the ego likes to go for defend or attack or just win against other egos. It's the ego battle, which I always call. And if we want something, you know, the ego can almost go, what do I need to do? What do I need to control to get this? Oh, I just must, Mm. I have to do this to get to this. And that's got nothing to do with us working on ourselves and being the best we can be. And I always say that in order to be, you know, a channel to a channel to manifest, to create, to co-create, to align with the universe for our highest and best good, we need to be caring for ourselves. So, you know, feel healthy, think healthy, consume healthy, like mind, body, soul intertwined needs to be taken care of. Um, and then what's meant for you will come. And I'm not saying we just sit back on the sofa and go, oh, when, when is that, you know, when is that coming through the door? Because we have to also put in the work. So it's not just I'm going to sit there under a tree and oh, I'm going to just do this meditation and then I'm going to visualize that car and I'm just going to keep doing that and wait for it to come. That's not going to work. And I just I wanted to put that message out there because I don't want to dishearten anyone, but that's not the way that this works. We have to be committed to ourselves first and foremost. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I think that's really important to make that distinction. You have to show up for yourself and you have to, and showing up for yourself. What does that mean? That means being disciplined about how you show up for yourself. I'm not talking about this in the sense that, you know, showing up for the self is a, you know, every other day type activity. Can you commit to showing up to yourself 365 days of this year, every day, you know, and of course, we're human beings, nobody is perfect. We're all going to have our moments where we fall off, where we can be more nurturing, or we can lack the empathy required to succeed in all of the ways that we want to. But the self-care and self-nurturing practice is about falling down and picking the self back up with love and compassion. So it's it's a 24-hour job, you know, and it, it really does require the work of discipline and showing up consistently. And when you start tending to yourself in that way, you'll see the way that it transforms the way that you show up for everybody else in your life. Well said, Um, an absolute agreement here. And yeah, it's all about having that highest vibration. And yeah, we'll have off days and we'll have moments, but if you can have that center point within yourself and some Mm. form of 
peace within, it doesn't matter what's happening outside. You'll always be able to come back to center. So to what Jonathan said in terms of, you know, keep up with the spiritual practices, keep up with doing these things that really ground you and center you and align you, that is going to help you navigate the best throughout this year and also understand and develop yourself you show up better in the world, your external reality transforms with that and, and, and aligns to what you really want in your heart and soul because the universe can hear you in your vibration, mm-hmm. can feel you, right? Um, Absolutely. It's almost like a silent voice, but singing voice. <laughs> the universe can hear you sing from your soul. Mm, I share. Absolutely. <laughs> and the, the one thing that I should mention about these numbers is Within numerology, the number 22 is quite sacred. 22 is considered to be a master number, and the master numbers are all of the repeating numbers. So 11, 22, 33, 44, et cetera, they are all considered to be master numbers. And essentially what that just means is they are different levels or octaves of spiritual vibration. And the 22 is the master 22 is called the master builder number. And the reason why it's called that is because this energy is very conducive for building the type of reality that you want, whether it be physically. So whenever I see people with 22 energy, I'm always encouraging them to work Work with their hands because often energy healers will have 22 energy in their numerology chart because literally you can build in things with your hands. They're healing vibrations with your hands. So there's that kind of vibration that we should talk about. That's why I'm encouraging people to write because this is a great year to write out the things that you want to create some type of master plan that involves your hands. But also when we talk about master building, it's also a vibration in which you are able to hold on to a visualization in your third eye, in your mind's eye. And if you can hold on to that vision, and if you can attach the feeling of already having gotten that thing that you are visualizing, that is 22 energy. That is the master builder. It's the building that we can do creatively within our consciousness, within that third eye. So it's worth bringing that into the fold as well to talk about. Wow. I'm definitely going to go and do some work after this episode. (laughs) That's really helpful, Jonathan. And I'm so glad that we have you here to give us all of this great insight. There was a, there's another thing that I really wanted to touch on. So um, I always find the energy of the eclipses to be quite profound. Um, I've personally Mm. experienced some very significant moments in my life, especially after spiritually awakening and being open eyes to the universe and what's happening um, through eclipse moments. And this year, there seems to be, I mean, I'm sure I read this, that the eclipses this year are going to be quite significant, maybe more so than previous years. Or have I got that wrong? Like, could you share a bit more about what it means for us this year or what we could be sort of be thinking about in terms of our self-development? Of course. So the eclipses this year are going to be falling in the fixed signs of Taurus and Scorpio. The first eclipse actually is going to be on April 30th of 2022, which is a Saturday. It's going to be in Taurus in 10 degrees. And then the next one will be a few weeks later in Scorpio on May 16th. So let's first talk about what fixed signs energy represents. And let's talk about the significance of Scorpio in Taurus. So fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius. Fixed signs do very well in consistent and persevering and pushing through in some type of very steady way. I often talk when when clients have a lot of fixed sign energy in their chart, it's about the marathon and it's not about the sprint, right? It's about pushing through on a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. And when you have it in the signs like Scorpio and Taurus, Taurus rules the second house. Taurus is the fixed earth sign. It's all about the body. It's all about self-esteem. So there's an 
um, a clue here that with this first eclipse happening in a sign like Taurus, it's all about how you are showing up in your physical body. So these things include what is your exercise routine looking like? What are you eating? Are you treating your body like the holy vessel that it is? And if you can commit now to some type of long-term persevering regiment to honor your body, you're going to excel with these eclipse energy hits in Taurus, which is going to impact your self-esteem and your physical body. Now with Scorpio energy, that's fixed water. Scorpio is about shadow work. Scorpio is about um, inner child work as well. So there's a theme here around tending to the physical body and then tending to the emotional body, which is represented by our inner child. So what is your long-term plan in terms of the way that you're going to be showing up for that inner child? Because when people talk about shadow work, for me, it also, it automatically always distills and translates to how are you tending to your inner child? Because often our shadows that are created are created from the wounds that our inner children have experienced. So with eclipses happening in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus again, so there's a theme here of not just the body, but it's about loving the body and mm. pouring light into the body. And then you have a sign like Scorpio ruled by the planet Pluto, which is regeneration. So it's all about how can you regenerate generate the inner child? What do you have to commit to long term so that your inner child can feel loved and not neglected? Does this make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm glad to hear all of this because being um, plant-based, vegan, and I fast most of the time, it mm. has transformed my life. I, I feel like I'm good. I'm ready for those eclipses, you know, bring them on. <laughs> I've been doing that lifestyle for a while, but I'm really trying to encourage those around me and through the podcast as well, family, friends. And um, I do get a lot of people go, oh, you know, you, your skin looks good or you just you just look really happy. And, and it's, it's about what we consume. It's about how we treat ourselves on a physical level too. So I'm really glad this is coming up because I really mm. truthfully believe that, you know, uh, the best care for ourselves to avoid illness and to have a long, you know, strong life is to really care for ourselves. It's, it's preventative, right? Methods. Mm, so, um, and, and hence why I fast because, you know, we don't need to eat that much, Jonathan. And, and, and I learned mm. that. And it, it also allows you to really spiritually connect when you, when you don't actually consume so much food. So it's allowed Absolutely. me to really channel. I'm sure you, you, you know this, but um, yeah. So I think that this is so interesting because if you take the energy of the eclipses and you take the energy of 2022 and everything you've said, they all really fit together. Like they're all these puzzle pieces that make one picture now, which seems really clear to me. Like, you know, the self-development and how you show up but from the physical to the emotional, so back to the sort of, like you said, the inner child and working on working through that to be your best self, but then also having the evaluation of how that, you know, translates to your relationships, whether they need to be re rejigged, refined, um, recalibrated or whatever, or, you know, starting to look at how you develop those relationships or Maybe potentially you might walk away from some of those and then create space for new um, new opportunities, new alignments and new new souls to come in your path as well that align to who you're becoming as well in this universe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just I want to mention that for those that may be listening that um, are interested in astrology, you should know that. If it sounds a bit general or if it sounds like these are broad strokes, astrology is really cool when you start looking to see specifically how this energy is playing out in your particular chart. So earlier, as we were talking about Jupiter and Pisces, this is a global transit. This is something that we are all experiencing, but we all have Jupiter in a different part of our chart, and that's going to be impacting our lives in a very specific way. So mm -hmm. having a Jupiter transiting Pisces in your fourth house of the home and family is going to be a very different experience than having a Jupiter energy 
um, transiting Pisces in your ninth house of travel and spiritual um, philosophy and higher education. I say that to say that as we're talking about these eclipses, for people that have prominent fixed placements, so those are people that have a Taurus rising or a Taurus sun or moon, Scorpio rising or Scorpio sun or moon, same with Aquarius, same with Leo. Just know that this year for us, because I'm a Scorpio rising myself, Woo! is going to feel particularly <laughs> potent. So it's going to be a particularly um, optimal opportunity here for those of us that have fixed energies in our big three to really do some deep dive and to do some deep and um, clearing out work. And that's not to say that people without these placements won't have that opportunity as well. But again, for those of us that have those fixed signs in our big three, we're really going to feel this energy. So it's going to be a great opportunity for lots of lots of healing and growth. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that's a really good point. And um, just to mention to everyone that's listening, if you do have an interest in, you know, looking at your natal placements, and we haven't done uh, an episode specifically around natal charts, but to understand specifically your natal chart and placement through the astrological changes through 2022 or as seasons change, this is exactly what Jonathan does. So you're more than welcome to contact him. And I'm sure that he'd be willing to, to take it from there and support you if he has space on his roster of clients or to give some advice. Uh, please do reach out. There's many other um, specialists out there. But um, as you may have not come across this before, you're more than welcome to connect with Jonathan or even just to start following his page and his content to feel more attuned to what's going on. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, forget New Year's resolutions, right? It's about <laughs> let's commit to our self-mastery, which I've always been beating the drum on. Mm. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, mastering the self and then everything else will take care of itself. You know, I often there's a great teacher, Ramana Maharshi, who is an Indian yogi, who said that if you want to have the biggest impact on this world, transform your own consciousness and everything else will take care of itself. So it's something that I always think about within the context of this world that we're in that has its fair share of problems. Obviously, if you can commit first and foremost to transforming your own beliefs into healing your own wounds trust that that work will have profound impact impact and will ripple out in your communities in ways that you can't even comprehend beautiful i really like that thank you for sharing so really guys you know those that are listening it's about really setting those intentions get get those pens out start writing use those hands with the master 22 power mm -hmm. Um, and allow yourself to evaluate, allow yourself to then think about how you create your space, if that's changing a boundary, releasing, surrendering, whatever that, whatever that means to you, you know, everyone's going to find a unique way of what they need to do. But don't be afraid, you know, we've got more episodes that talk around these topics. And that's why we're here, because we want to be able to share share the insights, share our own experiences and, and let you guys know that you're not alone. You can just adapt some of this info, um, use it as um, inspo and empowerment to do what you need to do because you know what's best. The truth lies within you. So in order to create what you want, the life that you want, remember, you need to have a healthy mind, body and soul and do that internal work and your external reality will transform like Jonathan said. I, sure. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly right. Thank you, Jonathan. You've got me bouncing off your great energy. So it's just, <laughs> it's just the reciprocation of this lovely um, conversation. So I just, I think that, that, that just wraps it up. And this has been such a great episode. I mean, I am so honored to be recording this type of content, this discussion with you first week of January, and it's going to get shared with our entire audience um, to get them motivated and just charged up to get the best out of this 2022. So thank you so mm. much, Jonathan. Thank you so much. I don't take the opportunity for granted. And to any 
everybody that might be listening in these 41 countries, your great audience and soul tribe. I hope you all have a beautiful year. Um, I, I pray and I hope that you step into your power and you surprise yourself in all types of various ways on your healing journey. Oh, that's so beautiful. So just as a reminder, we can catch you on social media, right? On Instagram and Twitter. And it's at Jonathan L. Dent, correct? Yes, that's right. Jonathan spelled J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-L-D-E-N-T. That's um, my handle on Twitter. That's my handle on Instagram. I'm often sharing tidbits about the new and full moon. So if you're interested in doing rituals and intention settings on new moons and releasings on full moons. Um, I'm always posting content about the moon. So yeah, tap in with me. Um, even if it's just to send me a DM to say hello, um, would love to be connected to you. I always like talking to people. So I hope that we can connect. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And thank you, Soul Tribe, for spending your first week in January with us and tuning in. And we will see you next week. If you're tuning in, we're going to continue with this, you know, powerful way to start 2022 and can't wait to continue this conversation. So lots of love and light. Bye. Bye, guys.